scripted within an ancient tomb which lies hidden beneath centuries of dust in the guarded library of Mechelon is the story of how the rift was formed. Though most cannot recall a time when the rift did not divide the enclave from the outlands, they were at one time unified. In that time, there were lands which were believed to bear the very essence of magic, or they were lush and prosperous. All who did not hold the secrets of the soil, which were protected by the pact of Giforro, coveted these lands fiercely. The great demon, Vatar, knew that with this magic, he would be invincible. He would at last prevail over all. Venomously, he led his army to attack the dwellers of the land to claim it as his own. The battle raged and the people fell before Vatar's vast army. Victory was so close it could be tasted upon their blackened tongues. As bodies of the defenders, they sprawled about them on the bloodied field. Exultantly, Vatar rose to proclaim his triumph. It was then that disaster struck in the form of a pathetic little wizard called the Mighty Zael. With a roar of anger and anguish, the wizard slashed his staff into the ground. The world trembled and then cracked, parting beneath a tower's feet. With an outraged scream, the demon lord plummeted to the depths. To be consumed by the earth, he sought to rule. A chasm grew from this powerful blast of magic, wide and longer than any could measure. It was too vast to be traversed, thus separating the people who fought against Vatar forever. The devastation on the faces of the defenders was a small consolation to the Dregatar, as they retreated to pray for Vatar's return. It is said that time heals wounds, and perhaps it is true. For in the centuries after the land was torn asunder, it appeared that magic began to knit them back together. The rift has grown smaller, and can even be crossed in certain locations. Dregatar, driven by an age-old lust for the land that should belong to them, are now raising their hordes, building siege weapons, and preparing for the day when they may take their revenge and possession of the magic lands. On the other side of the rift, the people of Selenheim are strengthening their defenses. They know another war will soon be waged against them. While the armies are being gathered along the border of the rift, the head counselor of Arkmur, Mordessa, is making further preparations. Volunteers are being brought to her for special tasks, and there are rumors about an ancient force about to be awakened one that has been slumbering for hundreds of years. And it is here that our story begins. Violently shaken from their sleep, the Chosen are taken by hooded figures to an unknown fate. Time has come. You have been summoned here to do my bidding, and prove your devotion to our cause. You should feel honored that you were chosen, for if you please me, you will be rewarded abundantly. However, should you fail, your reward will be eternal pain. Your first mission will be to bring me the Crystal of Everest. It is located in the house that once belonged to Zorana, a former enemy who is now dead. The home is still guarded, though, and it may be difficult for you to gain entrance, but that is not of my concern. The crystal can be found in the library. Bring it to me. It may prove useful very soon. another mission for you. There is a merchant named Marcus. He is a nuisance. Not only has he been spying on us, but he has been bringing supplies to the Enclave. I will no longer tolerate this! 
You will find him and dispose of him. The artifact you recovered has great powers. I don't think that even Selenheim or the old wizards know of the forgotten portals throughout the realm. With this crystal, I can send you anywhere I desire. Once you are done, I will open another portal for you. I will be watching. Very good. It seems you were able to accomplish the task well enough. Therefore, I will tell you of another nuisance you can help us take care of. The... Ancestors. The people of Mechalon have been quite a troublesome little lot. The fools think they have the capability to resist us. But they are greatly mistaken. We have them firmly in our grasp, and they pose no true threat to us. Even as we speak, they have launched a surprise attack on Ark Moor. I have heard that their leader, Alecto himself, is leading the attack. Rid us of him, and they will crawl back into the little holes they came from. You can now call yourselves true servants of the mighty Mordessa! And soon you will serve our overlord Vatar as well. For once I have the Tomb of Souls, I will raise the Great One anew. And through the bond of blood, we will be one and reign together over the world. To start the ritual, I will bring our glorious master back. I will need the Tomb of Souls, and you will get it for me. It lays within Zorana's former stronghold, in the Mansion of Dreams. Zorana, thought to rival me for our Lord's affections. The foolish woman tried to gain control of the demons using the Tomb of Souls, and ended up becoming one herself. And then she was defeated by that feeble-minded wizard, Zael. The legends say that the little man took the book and put it somewhere safe to be protected by a powerful guardian. But I'm certain those are just rumors that he started himself, to throw those who sought the book off the trail. He does not have the power necessary for such a feat. But we shall see. The trail leads to an old house, called the Mansion of Dreams. See what you can find there. Ah, yes. Perhaps these few would prove themselves to be an asset to the High Counselor. The ambitious adventurers might serve her well as long as their leash was held firmly, of course. As reward for their achievements, a far more difficult and important task would be placed before them. The information Mordessa would allow them would be limited, for they need only to do what they are told. Stepping through the dark portal into her chambers was rarely enlightening. Yet, they would learn more than they had expected. Ah! At last, it is mine! In order for my love and I to unite as he rises, it seems we need a true blood virgin. The only one I know of who would fit this description is Princess Yasindra from Selenheim. Go and bring her to me. A portal location has been provided which allows a small party to swiftly infiltrate the Enclave, granting us the element of surprise. It would have been foolish using it unless necessary. But now, time has come! Do not fail me!
the massive form of Atar dwarfed anything else that they had ever encountered. His presence was terrifying, for he was essence of power and evil incarnate. Princess Yasindra screamed and squirmed with all her might, but there was no one left to save her from her fate. She was devoured, and thus Vatar was bound to Mordessa, his servant. There was no doubt that he would seize upon her first mistake, break the bond and claim the world as his own. But now he was to command Mordessa's armies, cross the rift and crush the people of Selenheim once and for all. There would be no one to stop him this time. The servant adventurers were given yet another task of importance, to assist in destroying as many strongholds of the Enclave along the rift as possible in preparation for the glorious invasion. As they set out to do their bidding, Mordessa studied the retreating forms. They had served her well, but now, since she had Vatar, they were expendable. Vatar's twisted form watched them as well, but for completely different reasons, hidden well beneath his visage of death and terror. What is more glorious than serving the great demon Vatar himself? Not even the mistress Mordessa could rival the offered power and prestige that would come from being chosen personally by his eminence. Their rewards would be immeasurable if they helped free him from her trap, and the punishment if they did not would surely make death pale in comparison. Demonstrating his immense power, Vatar effortlessly summoned a portal which would take them to Ur-Anon Island, Mordessa's personal lair. Icy winds howled from the ocean and whistled over the small island, barren and lifeless. The only evidence of inhabitants was the crude structure perched threateningly upon the hilltop. Here they would forsake their mistress for a new master. Death and worse lurked ominously within every surrounding shadow. that your master lacks the courage or honor to face me in person. Now finish what you came here for, but don't expect it to be easy. little queen and her bothersome assembly fell to their destined defeat, and Vatar watched as a stunned silence fell over Selenheim, 
for all could feel the loss of their beloved leader. She who wielded the magic that nourished Selenheim was dead. Her only heir was dead. Their fate was sealed. With renewed vigor born of desperate men with nothing left to lose, the defenders continued their fight against the invading army, but to no avail. The hordes of Dregatar engulfed and devoured them. Most were put to gruesome, painful deaths. No honor was spared, no kindness shown. The insignificant beasts who used to be known as Selenheim's proud and valiant guardians were now led through the streets in shackles, chained as slaves. With great satisfaction, Vatar stood upon the mountaintop, watching the prisoners being herded away like dogs. Yet, a sense of unease was beginning to creep over him. Turning, the mighty demon looked down to see a mass of red and gold advancing toward the trampled battlefield. They were obviously intent on attacking, probably expecting that his troops were already weary from the war they had just won. But such blatant arrogance from these mortals who thought themselves greater than he could not be tolerated. Angrily he rose to call his army once more to war. But that is another story to be told another time.